from some of the earliest known human species all the way to us modern humans, the evolution web is tangled and incredibly interesting. Here are the top 10 extinct human species you were never supposed to learn about. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Homo habilis. All right, starting off this list, we have the Homo habilis, which is said to translate to meaning handyman. This is a species of humans that evolved in Africa sometime prior to 2 million years ago, so clearly quite some time ago. It is believed that Homo habilis went extinct about 1.5 million years ago. By the middle of the 20th century, it was starting to be accepted that humans first evolved in Africa from an early group of hominins known as Australopiths. Back in 1960, however, a research team in Tanzania found fossils that would sort of confirm this in a way. This fossil was one that sort of fell in the gap between Australopiths and humans as we know them. It was the discovery of Homo habilis, the first true human species to evolve. From what has been found, which is mostly fragmentary fossils, it has been determined that H. habilis seemed to have a brain that was significantly larger than Australopiths and more similar to later human species. It is believed that H. habilis behaved in a human way, like they made stone tools, which which at the time was thought to be different than their previous ancestors. This is exactly part of the reason they were named Handyman, but at this point in time we now know that Australopiths also made tools, but the name of H. habilis still stands and they are very important in the course of our evolution. In our number 9 spot today we have Homo antecessor. The discovery of this species starts out at a huge archaeological site in Spain called the Grandolina Cave. This cave has a rich history, but as relates to this list, at this site there has been found the remains of a hominin group called Homo antecessor. This discovery came in 1997 and this species is often described as having a mix of modern and quote primitive traits. It was thought that there were similarities with this species between both other species like Neanderthals but also with Homo sapiens. This was able to be confirmed through DNA sequencing or really a study of ancient proteins that were extracted from dental enamel of one of the fossils. They were also able to prove that this species was a closely related or sister lineage to modern humans, Neanderthals, and Denisovans which shows that they all must have shared some common ancestor. In our number 8 spot today we have Homo naledi. Also called the Star Man, this species certainly was an interesting one as they had quite an unusual mix of features. It is said that parts of their skeletons would be indistinguishable from modern humans, but there were other parts that seemed almost quote ape-like. This species also had a brain that was only slightly larger than a chimpanzee, but they were still capable of sophisticated and more modern human-like behavior. No one is exactly sure when these guys existed or when exactly they went extinct, and it isn't quite clear where they sit in the evolutionary tree, but some experts believed that they may have lived at the same time as H. habilis we already talked about. They believed that they probably went extinct more than a million years ago after being outcompeted by later species like H. erectus. There are others who don't agree with this however and who believed that this species lived much more recently, but then that begs the question as to how humans who looked so primitive could have survived until so recently. In our number 7 spot today we have Homo erectus. As I just mentioned in the last point, we have Homo erectus or the upright man. It is thought that this human species also evolved in Africa, this time somewhere around 2 million years ago, and they went on to quickly expand and spread throughout Eurasia. At this point in time it is debated exactly when this species went extinct, but it is believed to be around 143,000 years ago. While this species isn't the most well known, they are extremely important to our evolution. They looked like and behaved in similar ways to us, and they were the earliest known human species to have migrated long distances, which is not only an exceptional feat, but also really important to our world today. It is believed that this might be the earliest known species who was able to learn how to control fire, and also quite possibly the first to cook their foods. This opened the way for a better diet with improved nutrition, which then paved the way for the evolution of a larger and more demanding brain. In our number 6 spot today we have Homo neanderthalensis. We are talking about the most well-known extinct human species now the Neanderthals. How well known they are might be contributed to the fact that they were the first ancient human species to be discovered by scientists around 200 years ago. Neanderthals were thought to have first appeared in Eurasia about 200,000 years ago and they lived until somewhere around 40,000 years ago. It is often said that Neanderthals are like a cousin of us homo sapiens and that we share some sort of similar 
parent species with them. Despite these similarities, it isn't exactly clear when the split from the line happened between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, but some believe it may have been over a million years ago. Neanderthals are known for their sophisticated tools made from stone and bones, and it is thought that they might have taken advantage of fires that were caused by lightning, which showed that they were, of course, also able to control fire. It is thought that Neanderthals also practiced self-medication and that they made art, which only suggests that they might have been more cognitively advanced than people once believed. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Homo longi. This species is one of the most recently proposed hominin species, and they are thought to have originated in China. The skull that led to the discovery of this species was first found in the 1930s, but it wasn't until recently that it was made available for scientific study and analysis. The skull is thought to have come from about 146,000 years ago, and with this new information, it is thought that this skull might have brought forward a quote, long lost sister lineage of Homo sapiens. The eye sockets of this skull are said to be large and blocky, the molars are much larger than ours would be, and the brow ridge is said to be quite sizable. These are all considered primitive traits, but what's not primitive is the size of the brain, which is completely comparable to modern humans. This discovery is one that just reminds us how difficult it is to designate a new species with such limited resources available in terms of evidence. At this point in time, it isn't exactly clear where they fit in on the evolutionary tree, but it certainly is quite interesting and it reminds reminds us how complicated human evolution really is. In our number 4 spot today we have Homo rudolfensis. So this is a species that has very little evidence. Really just a single specimen. A skull. This specimen, also referred to as KNMER1470, is believed to have come from about 1.9 million years ago, and it was found in what was once known as Kubifora, but it is now Kenya. The skull was originally thought to be from the species H. habilis, the one we started this list with, but there were a few problems with this classification. Firstly, the brain case of the skull was quite big. H. habilis had brains around 500 cubic centimeters, but this brain case would have allowed for a brain the size of 700 cubic centimeters. This skull also had large teeth and a smaller brow ridge than what would have been seen on the skull of an H. habilis. This is exactly why experts concluded that this skull belonged to a previously unknown species, even accounting for the differences that might have been seen between males and females. That is exactly why this separate species was designated back in 1986. In our number 3 spot today we have the Denisovans. So this is a group that was discovered in a completely different way than the other species on this list. For most of the other species, we found fossils or remains that showed their distinct differences from other species, and these discoveries gave us very valuable insights into what their lives might have been like and around when they lived, but the discovery of these guys, we have little to no information on their skeletons, their appearance, or how they behaved, but we still know of their existence, and that's all thanks to DNA and genetics information. So basically, researchers found fragments of teeth and bones that were 50,000 years old in a cave in Siberia. Based on their age and the location they were found, everyone just assumed that the DNA extracted from them would match Neanderthals, but that did not happen. Instead, when they were tested in 2010, it was discovered that these bones belonged to a human species that is estimated to have last shared an ancestor with Neanderthals about 765,000 years ago. Right now, this species hasn't been given a scientific name, and this reluctance is due to the fact that so little is known about them. Through more research though, which is of course currently ongoing, it is thought that they might be formally recognized as a species or subspecies Homo denisova. In our number 2 spot today we have Homo florensiensis. This species is honestly a bit of an evolutionary mystery or puzzle that is super interesting. It is believed that they lived on the Indonesian island of Flores sometime between 100,000 to 50,000 years ago, but it is also believed that ancestors of this species might have been present on the island island at least 700,000 years ago. The puzzling part comes in when we talk about their appearance because it's just so different from ours. They wouldn't have stood over 3 feet tall, they had short bodies, super long feet, and a very small brain. This wouldn't have been all that strange when it came to the earliest human species like H. habilis when that species was wandering around Africa over 2 million years ago, but we are talking about a species that lives thousands of kilometers away and that was only a alive 
50,000 years ago. They're also thought to have behaved in a similar way to other early humans, like with the ability to control fire, cook food, that sort of thing. That is exactly why experts aren't quite sure how H. floresiensis fits into the evolutionary tree, but it is possible that they might have found themselves stranded on this island, and that is the cause for their hugely different evolutionary path. In our number one spot today, we have Homo luzonensis, another island dwelling population. This species was discovered on the island of Luzon in the Philippines, and it is thought that they lived there around 50,000 to 60,000 years ago. This species was discovered through just 13 bones from teeth, fingers, toes, and a femur that were found on the island. These remains belonged to three different individuals, but they gave us an incredibly valuable insight into this previously unknown species. In 2019, it was determined that these bones were different enough from the other known past human species that they were then classified into their own new species category. It is crazy to think that it's still so recently that we are discovering brand new species that are so important to the history of humans and how we got here today. It is said that the toe and finger bones of this species are quite interesting as they are slightly curved, which is a feature that is shared by living species of tree dwelling primates. It is thought that this may suggest that for H. luzonensis, living in trees might have still been a part of their lifestyle. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye.